I met a girl named Desiree and she lives right here inside of this truck camper. And something about this girl changed my mood for the entire day. I don't know what it was about her energy, but I couldn't stop smiling. And I guarantee by the end of this video, you're going to be smiling too. My name's Desiree and this is my tiny home on wheels. <laughs> I bought it last summer on the island and decided it needed some work. It had like the old orange plaid and the old countertops and stuff. So I gave it the Desiree touch. My feature is like the seashell backsplash pretty much. I collected all the shells myself on a backcountry hike uh, on North Island as well as um, beach glass and shells from the East Coast. So yeah, that means a lot to me. Um, another feature piece. <laughs> uh, that's a portrait that I did myself. I do uh, photorealism, so yeah. asking you questions like do you seriously live in this thing? <laughs> I'd be like yeah my one nephew actually showed him he's like it's small in here I'm like no this is really big it I is lived big. in a Toyota Tacoma for two years a VW Golf for two years a tent for two years so yeah this is huge um basically I yeah I just switched out like the countertops and I used like three quarter inch oak plywood finished plywood um, did the staining and varnishing myself and the nosing on the edge. Um, painted the walls the teal color, but otherwise this here is the original wood paneling. I wanted to keep some of it. Um, I changed up the trim to like nice cedar stuff. The handles for sure, just these little cute things. Those are awesome. Um, and then the lagoon table obviously opens up the space huge. Like. Uh, I can do yoga in here. <laughs> so yeah, that's nice as we know what the lagoon table is. But just, I can... you just stick those on there? Yeah. That's great. Yeah. All my crystals in the windows and stuff. So yeah, crystals and things like that are important to me. So I was like, I need to stick those. So for a lot of the stuff too that gets stuck to the walls, I use 3M tape. It's epic. That stuff will never come off. Part of my plant and my picture and stuff like this. Um, I still have the original inverter because uh, that's hooked in, hooked into my shore power. And then I got a new inverter over there, which is hooked into my solar system. Um, I have two panels on the roof, 100 watts each, and the alternator also charges it when I'm driving and it's just hooked into the trailer plug. This is a double bed. So for the longest time I was in like single beds and stuff, but this is like oh, room to That's sprawl. A huge bed. <laughs> it's a huge bed, right? A huge fixed bed, which is really nice. Uh, not going back and forth with changing the bed into a table and all that. Um, storage there is a massive amount of storage in here i did not realize uh like this whole thing and this actually this is also a bunk bed i've never used it as a bunk bed but it folds down to here for a bunk bed uh table comes off goes here and this creates a bed as well i've had a few people i've hosted a few people like for a week at a time and they love the bed it's super comfy this is the original stove super hot boils water like so fast um it's a little temp like it's difficult to kind it's kind of on or off but you can eh, just be gentle and turn it down a bit so you don't burn your eggs or whatever uh, but it's been it's been so awesome. Three burners, like how can you go wrong? Okay, I only <laughs> use one. <laughs> I only use one. So yeah, this fridge is the three-way fridge. <clears throat> I use it on propane. So far, the original fridge uh, was working great. I took it on a really washboardy gravel road for like a few hours, and then it was like a bit temperamental. So I've like I think it's not really working so much. So I had a friend that actually had an old camper sitting in his yard that had the exact same fridge. So we swapped that out 
and um, yeah, she's working really good. The freezer freezes stuff and keeps it frozen. It's pretty awesome. Like, hopefully nothing falls out. You never know, you know? So yeah, it's like lots of food fits in here and everything's frozen. It's awesome. This is key. It's been a couple times that I forgot the lock. Uh, one time I came in here and I had yogurt everywhere and <laughs> exploded. Uh, so always remember to lock your fridge. The furnace is a propane furnace um, and it works amazing. I was in Canmore for about a week early April and we were there was a snowstorm while I was there and uh, I just turned this on at night and I'm super cozy. It's like, yeah, it's really awesome. It's a bit colder down low, obviously just the direction it's blowing, but when I get into bed, it's super warm, so. Water, okay, so this is an 18, 19 liter jug. I prefer filtered water or spring water when I can. I will go out of my way to hunt down a natural spring and fill up my water. So I keep the drinking water separate from my tap water, even though this is potable water in my tap. I just prefer like no chlorine and natural and filtered water or sp the spring water. So there's a 19 liter in there and then I keep another 19 liter jug in my passenger seat. And then this sink holds, I have like a massive tank in there. It's two to three weeks worth of washing cooking water. So that's pretty awesome. Seashell backsplash. Uh, it was definitely a lot of question of how I was going to secure them to the wall. Um, with thinking about being on the move all the time, bumpy roads, all these things. So I actually used tile adhesive. Um, there's a brand called Mastic. So I used this specifically and used one of those um, specky trolls to apply it where I could except I had this massive trowel like this so down here I literally just like had a, a, a disposable glove on and I just scooped it out of the bin and smeared it on and stuck the shells on so so far it's been amazing like I don't think those things are coming off uh, I also decided to put a nice um, polyurethane finish on them so they're easier to clean if they get dusty. It's the same finish that I put on the countertops and the table actually. Who's living in the hammock? Excuse me. <laughs> Excuse me, are you awake? Hello. Yeah. Hello. <laughs> what's, what's sleeping in there? It's rocking. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's like a must for me to, like I eat a lot of produce and where do you put all your produce? So I made a really big fruit hammock, literally a piece of material from Value Village. And then I did my own little macrame cords on the end to hang from the hooks. And away she goes. Uh, nothing's ever fallen out. The hammock has not fallen down. The hooks are super secure. So it's, yeah, it's awesome. It holds a lot of, a lot of fruit for sure. All my curtains I sewed myself. <laughs> so yeah. That's just something you just don't see in a vehicle though, because it is literally set up like a house. Like, hold on, how's that stuff sitting there? Yeah, so most of it is, yeah, most of it's 3M, and then some of it is like the really sticky, uh, white sticky tack. Yeah. We're straight. <laughs> Maybe. I think we're straight. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's usually just like, why are you living in this thing? Like, what are you doing here? Where are you going? What's okay. the point of all this? Okay, the point of all of this is to be mobile and get out there. I mean, I love adventure and I discovered the outdoors when I was a teenager, mountain biking and stuff like that. And then I got into the climbing game and like climbers are, that's what they do. They live in their vehicles, dirt bagging it, you know? <laughs> so yeah, I mean, the lifestyle really found me and I lived in tents for a while. I lived on a bicycle, I was bicycle touring and um, lived in all my vehicles. I always camperized them. And the dream was um, like a sprinter van, camperized sprinter van. 
uh, but for me it just wasn't attainable financially and then I found this thing I was like oh yeah truck four by four I can go wherever I want to go and yeah um, I'm an ex-paramedic I worked for BC Ambulance for a while and that wasn't for me so I went on a journey to India and became a yoga teacher instructor and I uh, got my Reiki master um, certification initiation and now I'm kind of moving more into energetic work and psychic work and stuff like that and I want to be mobile I want to be a mobile healer and that's what my business is all about Lotus Awakening uh, and right now, I mean, I came to the coast and the island to do hiking and stuff like that, multi-day hikes. Uh, before I head to the bush, I'm going to spend three months in Prince George in a tree planting camp. <laughs> uh, I'm the first aider there, and I'm also a tree checker. So I just like walk around the cut blocks and check out quality and density of the trees that the planters are planting. So. It's a good amount of money at one time so that I can keep doing what I want to do, which is travel around and hike and rock climb and stuff like that. So, yeah. <laughs> in comparison to other vehicles, like obviously I was in super incognito and like small vehicles like my Tacoma, my VW Golf, like nobody ever knew I was in there. So this is definitely a bit more difficult to find places because it's very obvious that I'm in it that I'm sleeping in it in, at night because yes the tailgate has to stay down for me to get into it. Um, there is an aspect of it that I like that it's separate from the cab like all the food smells or the living it just it's like stays back here and is separate from where I'm driving I actually kind of like that. Um, I didn't think I would I thought I would like to just slip into my bed or whatever and crawl into the back but it's been really good. Uh, I haven't had any issues with anybody knocking on my door like, hey, you can't sleep here. Uh, I feel like I've become quite the connoisseur of camp spots <laughs> over the years. Um, you just kind of get an eye for it. like, And I have little criteria that I like, like, can I pee in the woods? <laughs> <laughs> like, is there a spot that I can go in the middle of the night or, or whatever, right? Um, so, yeah. Uh, this I've been living in for seven months and my plan is to be able to be in here for a few years at least just the investment that I've put into it and um, all the effort and I'm really I've really made it my home I've really created a, a homey space uh, which has been important to me so yeah so if you had to leave anybody watching this with something what would it be oh something to take Big eight. Like, this is your moment to be prolific. This is your moment to leave an impact on the world. <laughs> oh, my God. That's no pressure. What is it going to be? Oh, my God. <laughs> you know, because you're obviously out here just, like, just doing your thing. Following whatever whatever is pulling you somewhere. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because yeah. there's always something somewhere for some. There's a reason for somebody doing something, whether they know what it is, whether it's an, sure. an energy pulling them somewhere, or something inside of them saying, "I don't yeah. like this spot. I need to be somewhere else." Yeah. Like, did I just leave? I just did your ending. Thank you. you. Did thanks. <laughs> See you. <later. laughs> Peace out. Yeah, I'll just steal some of your words. Yeah. I have. Oh uh, yeah. Um. I mean, when there's that hesitation or that concern or that I don't know if I need to do this or should do this, that's often the voice of fear, which is the fear of the unknown. But I'm, I'm a huge advocate for just taking the step into the, un the unknown. In the unknown is where we find that expansion and that growth and that adventure and that spark of life and liveliness. Um, so I always say, go for it. You have that, oh, I don't know. It's like, just just go for it. There's absolutely nothing to lose. Absolutely nothing. You find out you don't like it, you do something else. That's It's that simple. It's actually that simple. You don't like your job, go to a different job. You don't like that job, you want your other one back, go get, it, go get your other job back. That's, it's life. Life is just way, way too short to sit on a fence wondering about that un unknown space. <laughs> I really love it when we get the chance to meet a nomad that has some experience and some wisdom to share with everybody. It's way better than filming somebody who just moved into a brand new van that doesn't know anything yet. 
Desiree, thank you so much for the contagious smile, and your giggle was in my head for the rest of that day. Thank you. <laughs> I'll send you the bill for the advice. Sweet. <laughs> All right, how can they find you online? So you can follow me on Instagram at Awakened Desire, and you can also check out my YouTube channel at Awakened Desire, or check out my website, www.lotusawakening.org. I'm sure that he will link the, de no, but list. Yeah, but yeah, what she said. <laughs> list the links in the description below. I will do that. Yeah, sweet, Would thanks. you like to retake that or are you just gonna leave that as the ending? Just like, mic drop, just done deal. <laughs> Peace out. Peace out. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks for coming. No problem. See you later. <laughs> I really enjoy sharing videos like these ones with you guys. And hopefully you guys enjoy them too. Thanks for watching everybody. And I'll see you guys on the next one.